Hello from the gutters. Welcome back to Phenomenology Club. I'm Butcher speaking to you live from quarantine in New Jersey, also known as New York State, where I definitely don't live because I live in New Jersey. What's up, everybody? Are you here? Are you alive? Can I get a vibe check? Vibe check. Vibe check. Um, so what's up? We balls deep in quarantine still. Uh, haven't been uploading like crazy because, you know, it's just kind of difficult to get on here and blab about art and performance art and whatever the fuck I'm usually blabbing about, morality, yada fucking yada. Uh, it's kind of hard to feel as if much of what I usually talk about is relevant when we're in this global motherfucking crisis. So, um, actually, if any of you guys have ideas, uh, oh, Maxwell says this is the first time catching this live. Hello, Maxwell. Welcome. Are you Max? Because I'm Max, too. Um, what was I just saying? Fuck, I forget. I'm still quitting Adderall. I'm not as sharp as I usually am. <laughs> Uh, it's difficult, but you know, I'm really trying to use this quarantine time to do some of the things that I've been planning on doing, even though I'm already a freelance artist, I work from home. So really, I have no excuse. All of these things that I've been putting off are things I could have done at any time since really, I'm here every day doing stuff. Hello, Will Rankin. Also your first time here. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was saying. Sorry. Sorry. My uh, lack of Adderall brain is a little slower than usual. It's okay. I'm coming back to normal. I'm setting a new baseline for myself. Um, if any of you have topics that you think would be good to talk about, maybe things that could be relevant to this quarantine situation or this disease situation, that would be really cool. Um, but also things that are not relevant because, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Just fucking talk about coronavirus forever? The stream must go on, okay? I need to upload, but I need to know what to talk about. I don't fucking know. What have you guys been thinking about in this crisis? It's just so hard, you know? And going on social media, trying to uh, see what everyone's talking about and shit, it's just like everything pales in comparison relevance-wise, I feel like, to what is going on. So speaking of what is going on, before we get into it a little bit, how are you all doing? Are you all doing okay? Where are you guys writing to me from? Um... I'd like to say, before I get into it, that the Phenomenology Club website is officially mobile friendly. I know a lot of people in Phenomenology Club and just people in general don't have computers. And up until recently, the site was not really uh, accessible in any sort of mobile view, but now it is. The website is www.phenomenology.club. If you want to go check it out, I've made it public temporarily um, because we're in a crisis and I'm trying to do what I can for people. So one of the things that I have on there that's now public and was previously members only uh, is our syllabus for our reading series, our speed reading series, which has just resumed this past Sunday. We met and had a discussion about the text by Friedrich Engels, famous collaborator with Karl Marx, titled Dialectics of Nature. Um, if you're not a member, you can still access and see all those materials. I made it public partially because as all of you people are trying to find ways to keep yourselves occupied in this quarantine situation, if any of you are interested in getting into philosophy a little bit, doing some reading, you can now see all of those readings on our website. Each PDF is uh, hosted on our website or via a link. We only use materials that are available on web. All of the readings are under 25 pages. And if you go to the site and see, I have an ordered syllabus and uh, the curriculum is specially designed for people who have no exposure to philosophy. Basically, the way I designed it is um, 
a reading series that goes chronologically through the history of Western philosophy. We start with Socrates, then go to Plato, then to Aristotle, yada yada. It's all in order. If any of you are feeling like you want to get into philosophy amidst all of these other things you're getting into in this quarantine situation, feel free to go on over to the website and get into it. But I encourage you also to become a member for only $1. That's all it costs. And I do make exceptions for people who don't have debit or credit cards. Um, <laughs> uh, DM me or leave a message. I don't know how, how find me. Just fucking find me. Send me an email. Uh, the email is on the Phenomenology Club website. But uh, we have quarantine activities daily we've been doing yoga yoga is very interesting that's something i would like to talk about on here uh maybe at the end of our 30-day yoga challenge that we're doing with youtube yogi queen adrian i don't know shit about yoga and anybody who's listened to phenomenology club at all probably knows that i'm just in general skeptical of like anything that falls under the umbrella of this culture of like new age bullshit which a lot of yoga stuff definitely does but i have to say in doing some yoga with adrian uh ignoring every time she tells us to like open our fucking third eye or whatever the bitch is <laughs> the fuck this bitch is talking about uh, I do find that a lot of it is actually kind of compelling and phenomenological. There's a lot of talk about focus, focusing your intent and your awareness, uh, which, you know, are very phenomenological concepts, especially if we're coming from the Husserlian school of phenomenology. In Husserl's phenomenology, uh, you know, the thing that he says is the universal characteristic of consciousness itself is intention so uh that's pretty interesting focusing your body uh or focusing your awareness into different parts of your body it's kind of kind of cool kind of fun so maybe i'll do a yoga chat <laughs> but i mean we're just following this youtube lady so it's not like i'm gonna be a yoga expert by the time this is done we're also shredding daily with jillian michaels <laughs> my fucking lesbian fitness queen that's my bitch uh we shred every day at seven we're doing her beginner shred series uh yeah so we do yoga every day we do shredding every day because exercise is very important we also have recently started playing dungeons and dragons which is really fucking fun <laughs> And another thing, historically, I've always made fun of, but hey, I can't make fun of it anymore. Now I'm officially a fucking Dungeons and Dragons bitch. Yo, that shit is fun. You guys play Dungeons and Dragons? What character are you? I love my character. I'm a I'm a monkey goblin witch. My name is Gara Jude, and I have a pet monkey familiar that looks exactly like me because we use magic. Even though that's a monkey and I'm a goblin monkey or something. <laughs> very different but we look exactly alike that's like our thing you know uh pretty cool the baby's name is baby bank named after <laughs> the baby from baby's day out you know i was trying to think of things too sorry i'm gonna talk about <laughs> stuff in a second but let me keep uh talking my bullshit for a second i had an idea for this quarantine if this is gonna last for a long time i'm i'm thinking about uh watching baby's day out once a day 30 days in a row the baby's day out 30 day challenge <laughs> i feel like that would really be an enlightening experience um and if i do you know i would turn that maybe into its own little series i want to watch baby's day out every day for 30 days and each time i do i want to <laughs> record my impressions what kind of new things reveal themselves to me as i watch baby's day out over and over again best film ever uh, let me just think real quick. Uh, some of the other things that we're planning on doing with our quarantine series um, is uh, Mandarin lessons. We also want to do keyboard lessons for those of us who have MIDI keyboards, but also those of us who don't. Just some musical lessons. I know many of us took piano lessons when we were small children. And if you're anything like me, you forget like literally everything. I don't know which note is which. So that's something I've been meaning to do. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. And also we were thinking about doing some blender tutorials together, but that's just that for that. That's, that's that on that. 
Uh, so yeah, pay a dollar. Or if you don't have it, like I said, email me. I'm very generous. I don't really give a fuck. Money is tight, especially right now. Uh, all I care about is that we are fostering a community and that you all have something to do and keep yourself sane and productive during this quarantine. What a what an interesting time we are in, folks. What the fuck is going on? What's going to happen? I don't know. I'm in New York, like I said, also known as New Jersey. And we're, I mean, I don't know if like because I'm in this part of America, if my future trajectory is going to look markedly different than everybody else's. I mean, New York is the hardest hit out of any state right now. Um, but I imagine that... If, that proportionately every state is about to be fucked. I mean, what states are you guys writing from? For those of you who are in the U.S. of A. Good old America. Uh, because, you know, I know like in the Midwest and shit, there's a lot of rural communities that don't have access to as many hospitals and shit. I'm worried for all you people out there in the middle of nowhere, you know. On one hand, it seems like a good place to be. On the other, if you are hit with this disease, I imagine that it's a very scary place to be. So I hope you're all paying attention to the social distancing guidelines and staying inside as much as fucking possible, okay? Um... Okay, so yeah, like I said, I'm I've been having a hard time thinking about what the fuck I could come on here and talk about because like I said, everything that I think about typically just sort of seems to pale in comparison right now to the thing that is at the forefront of all our minds, this fucking disease that is going through and eliminating our ranks with great veracity. Um, and one of the characteristics of this disease we all know is that it has a higher fatality rate in our more elderly populations. But uh, just to be safety queen for a second, I mean, this is a thing, too, that people are saying to take with a grain of salt. I've heard in the past week of multiple people in their 30s and their 40s, and I think some even in their 20s that have also um, died because of this disease. So please be careful. Um, but regardless, it's true that elderly people are dying more and more. And uh, we're having these kinds of discussions. Already we're starting to see certain people say things like, you know, well, <laughs> well, perhaps <laughs> uh, we, we should, perhaps the elderly should take one for the team and maybe they can stay quarantined. But the rest of us need to go about with our business as usual, right? Because otherwise, the deaths, the kinds of death and destruction we'll see uh, will far surpass what we would see from this disease alone if we all stay inside and stop working and our economy crashes and we turn into fucking, I don't know, dystopia, whatever the fuck. Um, and this question of respecting the elderly... And to what extent do we respect the elderly, I think is something that has, well, it's always a relevant question, right? But I started to see a lot of conversation around this question of whether or not we respect the elderly. Actually, sometime late last year, um, when all of this OK Boomer stuff was going around and elderly people were saying that they felt as if this phrase was kind of ageist. Um, and really just disrespectful. Um, and when this conversation was going on, actually, I had already thought to do a discussion about this, but I never did. So lucky me. Look how serendipitous. Now I have something to talk about uh, that's sort of relevant to the coronavirus. Um, but I asked on the Phenomenology Club Twitter in November of last year whether or not you believe in respecting your elders and why or why not. I'm going to read some of those answers to you. I was actually really surprised at some of the feedback I received when I asked this question. But if you didn't answer on there, um, and if you're in here right now, can I get some answers from you as well as I read some of these out loud to us? What do you think about respecting your elders? Is this a mantra or an idea that you uh, hold to? Personally, do you feel as if there uh, is anything, um, do you feel personally that you respect the elderly 
uh, as a principle in your own worldview and why or why not? Tell me. Let's get some discussion going. But while you do that, hopefully some of you give me some feedback. While you do that, I'm going to read some of these answers. And like I said, some of them really surprised me. Um, so let's read a few. So this was the question. I'll read it. I just said it, but whatever. Question. Do you believe in respecting your elders? Why or why not? As you answer, please try to answer with no specific circumstance in mind. Do you believe that age and deserved respect can or should be considered corollary at baseline? Why or why not? So these are some of the answers I got. Nah, respect is something decoupled from age as intrinsic modifier. Age is a filter through which understanding and expression of respect are passed and modified i.e. you respect a child in different ways than the kind of respect you would show an elderly person. Okay. This is another answer I got. No, age is, number one, simply experience and things one learns from experience can be respected or not. And two, just being still alive, which we all have slash are expected to do. Uh, someone else says, sure. Age should signal experience, and experience should be followed by wisdom. Obviously, this is increasingly no longer the case, as technology and new studies pass our elderly by and they are left ignorant, but in a small community Confucian scenario, yes, elders deserve respect. Someone else says, I start off with respecting anyone older than I am, but once they start being ignorant and or arrogant, I tend to just start tuning them out. I agree with most people here that say character is more valuable than age when it comes to respect. I'll read one more. Not inherently. Age and wisdom get conflated a lot, and the idea of age equals respect seems to be perpetuated by elders. Hmm. So let me see what you guys are writing, if you're writing anything. Hmm. Stephen Andrews says, I think we've deified youth as a culture. To which Elfie has just said, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, basically, all of these answers that I got, and I got many. I think I got about 30-something when I posted this on Twitter in November. Um, I was honestly kind of surprised to see that I would say the overwhelming amount of respondents said that no they don't respect the elderly um and that the idea that you should respect the elderly because they are elderly is kind of a silly idea in and of itself because age is or age may be considered by some people to represent wisdom but as we can see in our observable reality this doesn't seem always true. You know, there's a lot of conflict between people in our general age group, the youth, uh, and people who are elderly. It seems that the more elderly you go, you find a lot more people. At least this is the perception of a lot of the youth. The perception of the youth is that the more elderly you are, the more likely you may be uh, to hold bigoted opinions about race, about sexuality, about sex in general. The older you get, you might be more of a of an asshole, really. Um, Ancient Femme says, I generally respect the elderly as a principle, but it's not unconditional. As a person who works in the service industry, I've had people exhibit disrespect towards me, and I reciprocate. <clears throat> Barbie says, usually I struggle with authority figures and most of the time that's going to be an older person. I want to say I'll give respect if I get it, but I'm naturally going to come up to an elder with openness. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Lex says, I think it's a more cultural practice than societal. Huh, what do you mean by that, Lex? Not to go off topic, but what's the difference between cultural and societal? Who <laughs> says? Uh, so, so, um, kind of hearkening back to what, uh, who was it? Stephen just said, Stephen Andrew, that he, you feel as if we have deified youth as a culture. I think that that's absolutely true. I mean, 
Uh, to be honest, to give you my personal feelings, because why not? Let's just bear it all. Let's just get butt naked together right now. Uh, I honestly felt that the OK Boomer thing was ageist, and it did rub me wrong. I just really didn't like that. I see it kind of as shitting on old people uh, because we can. And the reason that we can is because I agree with Steven when he just said that we exist in a culture that has essentially deified youth. I mean, just by principle of being younger, I would say that culturally slash societally, shout out Lex, you have the upper hand, at least in any conversation about age, you know, because in because implicitly our culture treats being elderly as a thing that is undesirable at face value so that's why I didn't like the okay boomer thing and I did feel it to be ages because if I'm out here okay boomering old people and just being flagrantly disrespectful to them then I feel like you know that's easy it might be true I agree with a lot of the underlying sentiments in this general discussion that you know the more elderly you get in our population, at least in America, for example, you know, the more likely you might uh, be to find this or that person that's bigoted, has bigoted opinions about race and sexuality and all this. But I also think that that too is something that I really am not even sure about. I mean, I think it's kind of naive personally to assume that all elderly people are a bunch of fucking racist homophobes, you know? I don't really think that's necessarily true. And this is part of why I also disliked this, the okay boomer thing, because it's like, I mean, the people that you're okay boomering are the same people that gave us civil rights. They're the same people that gave us rights for gays. Like, boomers were the people at Stonewall, and boomers were the people marching with MLK and Malcolm X, you know? Like... And then you're going to say that the reason that it's okay to okay boomer them is because they're bigots, you know? Like, I don't know. Some of some of the discourse I've seen is just like, you know, the, fuck them. They did this and that and they gave us the climate crisis and all this shit. It's like, and they hate gay people and shit. It's like they literally got gay rights <laughs> for us, you know? It's like, damn. That's kind of a... Uh, it just seems unnecessary. I understand the underlying sentiment, but I just feel like it's punching down. And I don't like to punch down because punching down makes you look like a fucking asshole and a pussy. Am I right? On top of that, um, I, I think it's so self-righteous, like a lot of uh, the discourse that we see out here. You know, uh, this whole, I'm not the problem, you're the problem. I'm not... I didn't do it, you did it, you know? And I just think that on top of being self-righteous, which makes it undesirable and repulsive to me at baseline, it's also incredibly naive because you think that once we're that age group, the youth are gonna just love us because what? Because we went on Twitter and fucking talked about being gay all the time? Like, what has our generation done for anything? We like to act like the boomers are the problem and that's why we have, like, climate problems and shit like look what have we done we haven't done shit all we do is sit on twitter and fucking complain like what the fuck we haven't done nothing if you think that the youth is not gonna grow up and hate us just like we hate the generation that preceded us just like they hated the generation that preceded them you know everybody's passing on problems generationally and to hold any specific age demographic accountable I think is silly and you're also fucking yourself because you know if this is the kind of attitude you want to propagate then I'm not trying to hear it when the youth of tomorrow when we're the fucking old people i'm not trying to hear it from you when they similarly hate us and you could say that's fine i don't care whatever but i think you'll care when you're that old person honestly because also you'll know at that point we'll all know one day that being elderly is seen as implicitly kind of repulsive we kind of dislike the elderly I think in a visceral way you know what kind of jokes are always being made about them they're incontinent they're sitting around in their own fucking feces they're demented you know like it sucks culturally like you do not want to be a part of this demographic it's pretty terrifying you know to know that soon we're going to be a part of that demographic and the kind of disrespect that will be heaped on us simply because we're 
older I don't want that and once you're in that position you really can't say shit right because like I said earlier the youth will have uh the upper hand they can say whatever the fuck you want they want about us and it will be funny and it will be acceptable because we live in a culture that deifies youth like Steven said um but anyway uh, I I like to uh, you know give give equal consideration to all possibilities, and like I've said before, I am somebody that loves making charts. I love to make charts to map out the trajectory of my arguments. I have to sit and think about whether or not I think this is true and why, because all logic essentially works on these kinds of principles. You know, you can ch you can map out any logical argument. So this is something that I've come into the habit of doing. So I have made a chart for us to look at together. This chart is also on the Phenomenology Club website for any of you who would like to look at it later. Maybe you're not by your computer right now and can look at the chart with us right now or you're listening to this on Spotify because these are all uploaded to Spotify, in which case you won't be able to see this chart that I have made. Uh, so go check it out on the website if you want. But here's the chart for those of you sitting by a computer uh, if you would like to look at it with me. I imagine if you're on a phone, you probably can't see it well because it's kind of tiny. But let's look at this fucking chart together because I fucking love charts. By the way, if you want to make charts like this, go to draw.io. That's D-R-A-W dot I-O. Uh, they have a desktop software as well that I've downloaded to make this chart, but it's pretty much the same thing as their browser version. I fucking love it what the hell let's go can you see the chart i just transitioned here but oh here we go there we go okay there's my fucking chart <sighs> i have to pull up a bigger version of it as well wait actually before we look at this chart that's right there's one thing i wanted to do first um, something that we do often here, define the terms of our arguments. And this question, do we respect the elderly? I don't think that elderly really needs much of a definition. We all know what is elder, <laughs> what mean, what is meant by the word elderly, who, who we're talking about. But let's define respect because I think that, uh, depending on how we define respect, um, our answer uh, to the question whether or not we respect the elderly will be greatly changed. So, respect. Let's define it. I've pulled up Merriam-Webster so we can do that. Respect. 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 <clears throat> Definition number one. A relation or a reference to a particular thing or situation. <laughs> the example. Remarks having respect to an earlier plan. Definition number two. An act of giving particular attention. I.e. consideration. Definition number three. A. High or special regard. I.e. esteem. 3b the quality or state of being esteemed 3c respects plural expressions of high or special regard or deference paid our respects um there's a few more definitions listed but i won't read them oh actually there's only one more so i'll read it number four uh a good plan in some respects um so Really, I think that depending on how you define this term, respect, your answer as to whether or not you respect the elderly may greatly change. Because as we can see from reading these definitions, uh, there's really kind of two, even though there's technically four, but really there's kind of two. Uh, basically, respect in a sense as giving some sort of esteem or reverence towards, you know, uh, having some sort of sense of admiration for. Um, I think that perhaps a lot of people define respect this way. I mean, I think we all do. Uh, and 
uh, the other definition is really just respect in a more neutral sense that has nothing to do with admiration or awe or any of this, but really just a sort of neutral consideration of a particular thing. To give respect to an idea is simply to consider it, to pay it special mind, you know, um, which is a very different definition, you know. So, I think that when we ask this question, depending on which of these two definitions of respect we're using, the definition may change. Uh, that's something to consider as we think about this. So anyway, let's look at this chart I made because it's so fucking cool and I love charts. <clears throat> so this is what I came up with. Uh, when thinking about this question, do we respect the elderly? I gave three possible answers. Yes, no, and conditionally, aka sometimes. Um, and for all of these answers, um, I think that whatever your answer is, whether it's yes, no, or sometimes, we can all agree with the idea that respect is earned. And this is the answer that I felt a lot of people when I asked the question on Twitter were giving me the reason no. They were saying respect is earned. So no, I do not respect the elderly because the elderly have not earned anything. And I think that that's a really interesting idea. What do you guys think about this? If we say no, we do not respect the elderly, or maybe even we say yes, or sometimes, uh, we do not <laughs> we respect the elderly because respect is earned what do you think about the idea that the elderly have earned respect is there anything respectful at baseline about being elderly what do you guys think and why Casey Marshall has just said, I recognize the elderly had a different upbringing than I, so I usually respect them until they start acting like dickheads towards me because I'm young. <laughs> well, this is why I felt it was important to read the definition of respect and to think about which one that you adhere to when thinking about this question and your personal answer. Because to respect a thing like, an, or respect, yeah, a thing like the idea that the elderly have something we don't doesn't necessarily mean that you admire them for that, you know. I like to think of like, you know, one of the most, one of the most, uh, uh, extreme examples of an elderly person that we may not respect a Nazi okay let's think of somebody who was a Nazi and committed all types of atrocious war crimes uh during World War II we don't respect this person necessarily uh certainly not in a way that resembles the definition of respect where we talk about things like having admiration or all for their perspective but even that elderly Nazi, I would say, I personally do respect their unique perspective in the sense that I think there is valuable information contained within, you know. And this is why I think whatever a person like that, even the most terrible of terrible elderly people somebody that is absolutely irredeemable as a character with no sort of morality that we could relate to i think even them i would respect that they have a unique perspective um that i am interested in observing because i'm a phenomenologist so i'm basically a scientist so i basically am interested in all of it uh and this is why my answer really is yes we should respect the elderly and if you look at my chart the reason why i think we should respect the elderly is because although i agree that respect is earned following from this idea i think that age does represent something valuable implicitly because with age comes perspective and i don't think that that perspective needs to be something that is 
filtered through the lens of some individual like this hypothetical Nazi I'm talking about for it to have any sort of observable value. I think that even I think that the perspective of even the most morally bankrupt senior citizen is still valuable uh, when considering it for its perspectival value uh, in a way where I, the agent, the observer, is ultimately going to be the filter through which such perspective or perception can have any sort of applicable value, you know. If I interview a Nazi, I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to, to take their moral opinions, for example, at face value and be like, you know what, that's a really interesting perspective. I never thought about that. Maybe the Jews are all fucking evil, you know. But they still have a unique perspective that I can use for something. I mean, they were alive when I wasn't alive. They had a much different uh, life, you know. They, they saw all different types of things. There are things that can be valuable about their perspective that have nothing to do with, uh, you know, morality or something. Because, you know, this was the answer I got from a lot of people that... That age does not equal wisdom, and I absolutely agree. But I think that age does always represent perspective. Uh, so from this standpoint, I, I think that age is implicitly valuable. And I think that the elderly are deserving of some sort of respect in that regards, you know. Um, but also, of course, I think too that the kinds of physical ailments, I guess you could call it, that come with age too, I think also uh, make elderly people deserving of respect the same way I think children are deserving of respect, you know, or women and animals, you know. There's a reason that we see men punching women as different than men punching men, you know, uh, because women can't punch back as hard. So don't fucking punch me, bitch. And you know what? I won't punch you either because I respect your position that if I punch you, you are not <laughs> as right to punch me back. So that would also make me a woman wrong to punch a man, in my opinion, simply because I know that he should not punch me back. So why would I put him in such a situation? It's also why, you know, uh, it's not nice to punch animals for no reason. I mean, if a bear's trying to kill you or something, I don't think anyone cares if you punch the bear. But you know what I mean? Being elderly obviously represents a, a physical handicap in many ways. Uh, so, so that's another reason we got to respect the fucking elderly, you know. Um, but I think that... Uh, I think that beyond this, you know... Um, all perspective is a thing that we should see as being valuable. And I think that the kind of disagreement that I have when I say yes, respect the elderly because they have perspective, uh, which is a thing that they earned through age and age is in it of itself earned. The longer you stay alive, you have earned more time on this earth, you know, like it's literally a, a quantitative process of earning um, but, but I think that ultimately the disagreement boils down to, to a consideration that the elderly person themselves will not be the ultimate authority on whether or not their perspective is valuable, you know, that's ultimately up to you. And I think that maybe this answer feeds a bit back into or this, this disagreement feeds a bit back into what I was speaking about earlier when I feel as if a lot of people in our generation are in this mode of wanting to absolve themselves of accountability, absolve themselves of doing anything, you know. If you don't think that there is something to respect about the perspective of literally everybody that is not you, to me what you are saying is that, I'll respect their perspective if they give it to me in a way that I can appreciate at face value. And in that way, you're kind of absolving yourself of the responsibility to be your own filter and your own authority on whether or not anything from any individual's perspective is valuable. You know what I'm saying? 
I think if you consider yourself more as a documentarian and that you can gain insight from even the most warped and morally bankrupt perspective by filtering it through yourself and taking what is valuable and what is not valuable about that and internalizing it into your own worldview, you know, I think that this is the mode that we should all be immersed in constantly, especially as phenomenologists. This is, this is much of what we do. Observe <laughs> and begin to draw hypothetical conclusions by making connections. I don't take any of your motherfuckers' perspectives at face value. Whatever you tell me, I then ask myself, do I think that was a smart thing to say? I'm not going to respect your opinion at face value. I'm going to respect that you have a unique one and I will respect myself enough to know that I am the ultimate judge of what is valuable. So I have to pick it apart. So there's that, okay? I've said what I need to say. Respect me. Respect me, okay? I mean, also, just be real. Like, when you see kids younger than you blabbering about whatever and they know everything and that da 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 you know, when you're like, dude, I'm older than you. I did this 10 years ago. I'm thinking of, like, driving or something, you know. Kids always want to fucking comment on your driving. Little sisters and shit. And it's like, bitch, I've had my license for 10 years. If they were like, I don't give a fuck. I got my license yesterday. It doesn't matter. Like, actually it does matter, okay? I've had my license a decade longer than you, bitch. You listen to me. Never gotten in any crashes, okay? Uh, I'm gonna read some of these comments real quick. Y'all are fighting in here. Just because you're old doesn't mean you have experience more than a young person. I honestly feel like some old people had sheltered lives as compared to young people who are internet savvy. Casey, I disagree, honestly. Uh, I think that if you are older, you have experienced more than a young person. Though I don't know what you mean by more, but in the most broadest consideration of what you mean, uh, you know, I think that, like I said, age is literally a quantitative thing, you know. If I've been alive for 100 days and you've been alive for 50 days, then obviously I have experienced more than you. Even if I spent the whole of my 100 days in a room, quarantined by myself, and you spent the whole of your 50 days backpacking Southeast Asia, you know, you have experienced more of Southeast Asia, but I have technically experienced more because I have been here longer. <laughs> Maybe what you mean to say is that old people haven't necessarily experienced the diversity of experience, more diversity of experience than younger people, to which I would absolutely agree. But there is still something, in my opinion, implicitly valuable about just existing for longer. Because, like I said, even if I spend the entirety of my 100 days in a room by myself, and you've only spent 50 days alive but have spent that time backpacking Southeast Asia, I still have something you don't have. I have the added perspective of being here for 100 days, and you only have it. From the perspective of being here 50 days. So sit the fuck down bitch. I have something too. I have something you don't have. And not only that. I have something that one day you will have. So you should respect that as well. That one day you will be in this position. And then you will be in a position where you can have such an opinion. I see it that way as well you know. I'm not going to tell somebody that's been alive 100 years longer than me. It doesn't matter you've been alive 100 years longer than me. I'm smarter than you. I have the internet. I did this and that, you know. Uh, I think that I don't yet, ha I haven't earned the right to that opinion. I think I will earn the right to that opinion when I am their age. Then I can look back and say whatever the fuck I want, <laughs> you know. But until I get there, I'm not even going to hypothesize that I know more than an elderly person. I will not. I don't think that I've earned that right yet. I, I haven't earned the right to speak about what an 80-year-old person knows until I am also an 80-year-old person. This is what I believe. 
anyway it's been 45 minutes let me get out of here please give me a thumbs up because that would be really fucking nice like I said, I'm going to try to keep uploading, but it's also been kind of difficult thinking about what I should be talking about because what is so relevant, you know, with all this shit going on, it's really difficult. Um, but I'll try to think of some things. And like I said, please leave me a comment or in the chat what kind of topics you would like to hear me speak about because honestly, I need a little inspiration. I don't know what people want to hear from me right now. I don't know what I'm willing to give them right now. But regardless, we're very active in Phenomenology Club. Go to the website, www.phenomenology.club. We have daily quarantine activities. The most notable being our exercise programs, which is a very important thing to be doing as we're all cooped up inside. Um, we'll be doing them actually in a few hours. So if you join right now, if you're not a member yet, get your ass in here and come exercise with us. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to be watching some movies soon too. Uh, and of course, continuing through all 23 seasons of, of Thomas the Tank Engine. Anyway, uh, thank you all. I hope you're all being safe and respecting your motherfucking elders. Goodbye.